Anyway, second debater from the affirmative team, Daniel Kinsey. Now, Daniel majored in coffee drinking and intellectual posturing at the University of Melbourne somehow graduating with an honours degree in law and a less honoured degree in arts. <laughs> Along the way, he got into a screaming match with Italy's foremost Marxist legal theorist, developed the socio-legal doctrine of taxi estoppel, and lost the only three-way tie in the history of the game show, Sale of the Century. His first job was appearing as a magician at children's birthday parties which entailed learning the fine art of misdirection and being able to make money appear and disappear. <laughs> These skills have proved surprisingly useful in his present position as a lawyer with Alan's Arthur Robbs, where currently, as he describes it, he puts the fun in funds management and the super in superannuation. Daniel Kinsey. So ladies and gentlemen, before I tell you why it is indeed better to work at a big firm, I'm going to deal with my learned friend's misleading and deceptive conduct. There is only one lawyer in the negative team who is from a small firm, and that represents half the firm because the solicitor is still in the country learning to put his gown on. Now, Kim spent a lot of time telling you about how stressed big firm lawyers are. To this I respond with my first reason why it is better to work in a big firm. It's easier to hide. Now, there are a number of strategies that you can employ to avoid doing any real work and maintain a work-life balance, which the partners seem to think mean that they have a life, the juniors work like dogs, and the books balance. One way to hide is you join numerous committees and interest groups, things like the Smartphone Privacy Task Force, the International Animal Rights Law Interest Group, and my personal favourite, the Belarus and Ukraine Labour Support Housing and Education Team. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, so we shortened that to bullshit. Um, <laughs> And when you join these committees, you've got access to free lunches and better still, you've got opportunities to pad your timesheet. So when you're checking Facebook, you record that the Smartphone Privacy Task Force. <laughs> when you watch funny cat videos on YouTube, you record that to the International Animal Rights Law Interest Group. <laughs> and when you have a vodka tasting competition with your office mates, you record that to bullshit. <laughs> now, the other way to hide is you've got to master the capacity conversation, which this is how you don't do it. Do you have capacity for this mindless, tedious data entry task that I want you to do? Uh, why, yes, of course. I'll stay here until 2 a.m. instead of midnight, and I'm glad I spent five years at law school in order to play around with Excel. But it's okay, because the deal's on the front page of the AFR. Wrong! That's, that's not how you do it. Let's, let's, let's see the correct way. Do you have capacity? Well, actually, I have to finish this task for insert name of scariest partner on the floor by lunchtime, but I hear Junior, who I like the least, has a bit of spare time at the moment. <laughs> And for bonus points, you exploit Chinese walls with what I like to call the Mongolian hordes gambit. Uh, do you have capacity to help me with Project Harry? Uh, sorry, I, I'm on the Project Voldemort protocol. I'm conflicted out of that one. <laughs> now, look, that's all well and good, but if you want to stay employed at a big firm, you do actually have to bill some time. Billable units are the thermonuclear weapon of big firms. Like any law firm, even a small firm, can, can charge like a wounded bull. But we at big firms, we charge like teenage girls at a One Direction concert. <laughs> and to do this, what you need to do is you need to learn to exploit narrations and billing codes. So, you know, when you first start at a big firm, you're a bit confused about what preparing, perusing, attending mean. Here are some examples that I picked up from wise senior lawyers. Shredding large piles of documents, you record that as preparing for court. <laughs> Perusing is used to record time you spend staring out the window at all those great things you can see from a 40th floor office. We call that perusing developments in construction law. <laughs> attending means going to, so when you're going drinking, you record that as attending to business development. But it can also be used for other things, so attending to my third martini, attending to networking with that hot associate from property. Um, that one you record as personal development. Uh, and then you have a thing called reviewing. Did I have a good time? How will I handle the awkward elevator conversation? Uh, reviewing strategic options. And the process is iterative. After reviewing, you might start considering that nasty ration, whether you should get it checked out. Um, researching recent biomedical developments. Reason number two why it's better to work in a big firm, the perks are a lot better. We've got better facilities. You know, small firms, they have a first aid box, but at big firms, we've got a wellness room. It's, 
it's not called a sick bay because no one at big firms gets sick. They don't survive. Only the strong survive. It's the law of the jungle. Um, so the wellness room and its bed is mainly used by senior associates to take quick naps during 48-hour marathon deal closings. Um, the wellness room also came with its own nurse until the GFC got rid of that. We had to cut off some of the fringe benefits. Uh, the other things is you've got, big, you've got big firms give you things like gym memberships, after-hours meals and taxis. So that's so you can work longer and harder. But the clever lawyer goes for the trifecta. Out at 5.30 to the gym, back for dinner at 7, taxi home in time for CSI. Trifecta win. <laughs> Another great perk is client entertaining. And no little firm's client entertaining does not mean taking your client to it for the Pot and Palmer special at the local. Now, in order to maximise your opportunities, you've got to join a group that does no real law but lots of business development. Uh, corporate is ideal for this. And then what you do is you let your credit card run wild as if you worked for the health services union. <laughs> There's a good reason why lots of big firms are located at the bottom end of King Street, and it's not just because lawyers feel comfortable around their own kind. Reason number three why it's better to work in a big firm, you've got a bigger pool for intra-office relationships. Now, while I was still at law school, I noticed that mating within the profession was frequent, but only after a year at a big firm did I really figure out that most of the relationships actually happen within an office. Um, I attribute this to some sort of Stockholm Syndrome, because let's face it, we're not the most photogenic group of people, with the possible exception of the fabulous Justice Betty King, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But the great thing about a bigger firm is you've got a broader range of personality disorders. So you're likely to find someone compatible with your own. I'm, I'm going to find the perfect histrionic to complement my paranoia. And if you date someone in a big firm, you can have romantic dinners at the office together, which is the only time you'll see each other. That is if you find takeaway ordered on the corporate credit card to be romantic. And after dinner, if it all goes well, then there's always the bed in the wellness room, which might finally live up to its name. But on reflection, seriously, dating another lawyer makes sense because if your partner is a lawyer, or better still, your partner, they're going to get your corny jokes about, you know, coming to equity with clean hands. <laughs> or if unsuccessful, and I'm looking at you gentlemen, equity considers done that which should have been done. <laughs> the downside of all of this is that your partner might in turn make a joke about the law con not concerning itself with small things. And that conclusively proves that bigger is indeed better. Thank you very much. <laughs> A wise young man who can recognise beauty when he sees it. Mm. You'll go a long way, Daniel. Now, the second debate, although I have to say the word capacity, what's bloody capacity? Does that mean can you do something? Oh, God, why can't you speak English? 